Hello everyone. The purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate one way to convert a 2D drawing into a solid model. The, the model is difficult to create because the object has four tapered sides, but I finally did it. Let me show you how. To begin with, I'll erase the small viewport containing the solid in order to redraw it. Then I'll click the Model button to gain access to model space. Start with the Box command and specify a first corner on the screen. Type L for Length and then 4.5 Enter. Specify a width of 2.82 Enter and specify a height of 1.96. And then, of course, we want to switch to southeast isometric view. Now pan to an empty part of the screen to draw another box. Specify the length to be 1.31, the width as 2.82, and the height as 0.98. Now we want to move the small box from the midpoint on the top to the inside to inside the large box at the midpoint on the top. And then of course subtract the small one from the big one. At this time, I'll draw a line from the top surface, midpoint of the top surface to the midpoint of the bottom surface, and then draw a circle at the midpoint of this line, which we'll want to extrude. The circle diameter should be 0.94. Next, we will extrude the circle and subtract it from the solid, an extrusion length of 5 should do the job. Excuse me, I mean minus five units. So far so good, but now we have to taper all four sides. For me the best approach seems to be to slice the object with a surface. With ortho on, draw a line from the lower left corner of the object straight up so it clears the object. Using the 3D Rotate command, select this line and then attach the icon for the 3D Rotate command to the bottom end of the line. Select the red axis and type minus 25 to rotate the line clockwise. My apologies, no negative sign. I meant 25 degrees positive, enter. Now type EXT ENTER to extrude. Select the line to extrude and move it to the right so that the surface is created cutting the object. With the surface showing, type SLICE and ENTER. We are now asked to select the object, specify a start point, or select a surface. I'll type S for surface and enter and then select the created surface. Upon doing so, we are asked to select the solid and to keep one or both sides. For now, I'll just type enter to keep both sides. Then I will erase the surface and move the sliced off part of the object to the left. Using the same procedure, we also want to slice off the opposite end of the object. Therefore, we'll draw a vertical line from the lower right-hand corner and rotate the line 25 degrees counterclockwise, that is, minus 25. Then we'll extrude this line to the right, creating another surface. And again, we'll type slice, select the object, then type S, and select the surface and keep both sides. 
using the same procedures we can slice off the front and back sides but remember that the next When the back side of the model is properly sliced, the, so the model will be finished. And then I can erase all the unnecessary parts. Having finished the solid model, I want to get back to paper space to view the drawing properly and make it ready for printing. So I'll click on the layout one button. As you can see, the small template rectangle is still there. Now to create the small viewport, I'll use MView command and select two diagonal intersections to create the viewport. Then of course, I'll double click inside the smaller viewport and then switch to isometric view, pan and zoom to enlarge the model. To get back into paper space, double click outside the viewport. You always have to remember that when using paper space, the entire drawing should be printed at a scale of one to one, even though individual viewports can be set to different scales. You set the scale of the large viewport by selecting it, clicking the properties button. The standard scale is found under miscellaneous, and that is where you set a scale for the viewport. Once the scale is set, you double click inside the large viewport to gain access and pan the 2D drawing is visible. Sometimes it's necessary to move the solid. Then of course you double click outside the large viewport to get back into paper space. Finally, if we don't want the large and small uh, viewports to be printed, we go to the layer dialog box and freeze the layer viewports where the viewports are located. The drawing is now complete. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please comment on the video as I enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for watching.